Alright guys, so welcome back to my devlog, and today I'm going to be showing you what I got done this month in my custom C++ game engine. If you don't currently know what I'm working on, you can view the card in the top right hand corner of the screen here to see my previous videos. And if you do, stick around and I'll show you what I've been working on. This month I have actually started working on zooming the camera from a micro level to a massive level, such as going from a planet down to the size of a grain of dust on the planet. And this is really cool, so I can't wait to show you guys this. I've also started creating some assets in Magicka Voxel, which will then be loaded into the engine for us to actually look at and generate into the world. Magicka Voxel is actually a really cool program that's allowing me to create voxel models for the engine. So this is the kind of stuff that if you want to work in the engine, you'd have to create a voxelized model in something like Magicka Voxel, or down the line, I might actually try and make my own. 3D modeler for voxels. So here's a bit of speed art of me working in Magicka Voxel. And remember, I have just started using Magicka Voxel, so don't expect this to be the best work you've ever seen. Another thing that you might have noticed is I've actually created the GUI system for the engine. So from last month when I implemented IAM GUI into the engine, I have now actually laid out windows and created some logs for the engine to work with. The first step to getting this working was to get a Vulkan texture displaying in a window in IAM GUI. So that means you can have like a window with inside the editor that you can dock to other windows and drag around. I did get that working, that took me a little while. I had to edit some of the IAM GUI code because the library doesn't actually support Vulkan textures, which is a bit of a pain, but that's all working now, so that's good. The window layout that I've decided at the moment contains a logger at the bottom that you can clear, uh, copy and stuff like that. I've got a metrics window that is the basic IAM GUI window. It shows the FPS and frame times. That's useful. And I'll have a properties panel in the left side that at the moment doesn't have anything in it because I don't actually have separate entities in my game engine, but down the line that will be extended to have properties of different entities. Another thing that you might have noticed is the palettes have been changed. Now the generation of the voxels, the colors are actually picked based on the location. So voxels in a similar area will have similar colored materials. This definitely makes the whole thing look a lot better until I'm able to actually work on the generation code and have something a bit more interesting than just random voxels showing everywhere. All right, so now we can get onto the really interesting part of this month's work, and that has been making the engine able to zoom from the scale of the earth down to less than a millimeter with no loading. This is a massive scale change, and with a little bit more work, the engine should be able to support scales of the entire observable universe, which is 8.8 .8 times 10 to the 27 meters, and we'll be able to represent that to less than one micrometer. This is humongous. That has not really ever been done before, and this is one of the core bits of the engine that I really want to get working. We're doing this using multiple coordinate systems to support 128 bit of precision. So I've created a local area which is your 8 kilometers by about 8 kilometers which is a 32-bit float. This is then indexed using 32-bit integers that then get indexed using 64-bit integers. Altogether this gives you unparalleled precision and the ability to have a game that has never been seen before on that scale. So in the engine right now, I've got it working from the scale of the earth down to a millimeter. And as you can see, I've had to slow down the loading of the voxels a bit. That's just to make sure we don't run out of memory on the GPU. I'm going to talk about that a bit later in the video. For now, if you just watch this, I think it's amazing.
So there's one problem with this. As you can see, it crashed the engine. That's a pretty big problem. As you can see, it says GPU out of pages. So that basically means that the graphics card has run out of memory and we need to fix that because you can't be having that as you're playing the game. Now the solution to that is a voxel cache. So as you can see here, I've got the CPU loading in voxels onto the GPU and the red is what's loaded. And we need to at some point unload one of the GPU voxels because we need space to put new voxels on. The GPU doesn't have as much memory as the CPU. You've got more RAM, probably around 16 gigs of RAM on your CPU and the graphics cards have less than that usually. Now I've been trying to fix this voxel cache problem this month and as you can see it doesn't seem to be working out very well. It causes the whole lock tree to be reset. That's because it's picking the wrong voxels to unload. It's picking ones that we're still trying to render. This causes the whole tree to be overwritten. This needs to be fixed before I can actually zoom in all the way on the lock tree. So my plan for this month is to actually implement that system fully and have the loading and unloading of voxels so that the GPU never runs out of memory. Once that's implemented, I can then have the zooming from the scale of the observable universe down to a micrometer. And that will be amazing. I hope to see you guys then. Thanks for watching the video and I'll see you guys next month.